Like most successful entrepreneurial owner-managers, Richard Clues started out as a tea boy and worked his way up. His fashion retail business, The Collections Group, which began here in the Channel Islands, now runs up the length of Britain, making him, in his own words, a non-stop travelling salesman. Having built his business up over the last 20 years to the size it is, now employing a staff force of over 100, Inside Out has come over to Jersey to find out whether Richard achieved all of this with a plan, what managerial insights he's gained along the way, and ask the story of how he came close to creating managerial mayhem by putting his foot in it. How you started out as a fashion retail owner manager? So uh, back in 1991, I arrived in Jersey and uh, applied for the junior salesperson's job in uh, a store called Men's Club, which was the first store of uh, soon to be the Collections Group, and started there as the very much the tea boy. So knew nothing. Um, they've still got photographs actually of me in the the outfit that I had on the first day, which would, uh, would, would make us all smile, and thankfully we won't be showing that today. But uh, no, learnt right from the beginning, right from the basics, supporting the sales team. Uh, that was my job. What gave you the impetus to move from being T-boy salesman to, to running a, a store yourself? Moving the business on was, was came about with the, with the opportunity to get involved um, as, a, as a shareholder in the business. That was something that came along quite quickly when the owner at the time of the business obviously saw something in me and, uh, and gave me the opportunity. And I obviously will let forever be grateful for that opportunity because we wouldn't be here now. So from a single store selling menswear, you've truly branched out over the years. Yes, indeed we have. I mean, sometimes I, I question myself quite what we were doing, but the original rationale was that we wanted a bigger business here in Jersey and we could only have so many menswear stores, so we needed to move into the other genders. So premium women's wear, um, premium menswear we've already mentioned, children's wear, um, surf wear. We're the proud custodians of brands such as Hugo Boss, Giorgio Armani, uh, Quicksilver from the surf wear business, the likes of Mulberry, Dolce & Gabbana from a women's wear perspective. So we're, we're very proud of these agencies that we've worked very hard to, to acquire. So, uh, and, I, and I believe you've had a good look around the stores today and I hope you've enjoyed it. businesses that run the length of, of the UK, mm. haven't you, as well as it, what, what you manage here on the island. Sure. Um, mark differences between running a Jersey-based company and a UK one. Let's hear um, Yeah, numerous. Um, thank you for reminding me that the business does stretch from the most southerly part of the UK, mm. as in Jersey, and, and right the way up to Northumberland. Um, we've got a business up just north of Newcastle. There is massive differences um, between between both the UK mainland and here, as you point out. But um, one of the biggest things I would say is that, is that from a red tape perspective, here in the islands, we are a little bit more relaxed. Um, things are a lot easier to get done. Um, we know local influential people who might help us uh, get past the post a little bit quicker than things would necessarily take in the UK. Um, uh, recently, I had a situation where we were looking to, to move into Sunday trading, which is a new law here in Jersey. There was a delay on my permits. I phoned my friend, who's the, the constable of St. Helier, and explained there was a bit of a delay, and he told me to just open the store and we'd worry about the paperwork later. I don't think that's something you'd ever experience in the UK. You've had a recent injury, accident. Which is why you're in my house. <laughs> which is why we're here. <laughs> Indeed, uh, we had to come to you uh, for this interview. The impact this injury has had on your business mm. has uh, given you a, a new resolve to bring changes in your Absolutely. management. Tell us about that. I think it's important. I mean, it, three weeks ago, I, I, I broke my ankle and uh, it really has uh, put me back in terms of being able to get around. And it's, it's made me very aware that the business relies on me a little bit too much. And I've already started to challenge certain, 
senior managers within the team that this has been a real wake-up call for me, that if something, heaven forbid, very serious was to happen to me, it's important that the business is able to conduct itself in the manner that it always has. And so it's, it's, it's just been a bit of a wake-up that we need to make sure that the business isn't overly reliant on one individual, it's just not healthy. And do you think that, that you know once you've sort of kicked in that kind of newfound responsibility? I can retire. <laughs> well, I was going to say you can expand. <laughs> there we go. Really We're coming go. at it from a different <laughs> angle. No, I think yes. Obviously, um, the, the, the less reliant the day to day is on me, that would that would ha a make a massive difference mm. to my life, mm. um, and b it will give me more opportunity to look at, look at other opportunities. So that's obviously something that we'll do. I'm, sadly, I won't be retiring. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wish you luck with that and with your recovery. Richard Hughes, you. Managing Director of Collections Group, thank you very much for talking with thank us. Thank you. It's been great fun. Thank you.